I was going to do another lap around the park, but I heard coyotes in the ravine, and I've never heard that before here. So I figured I'd park myself and talk to myself a little more. And of course, what I say will continue to be disjointed. And that's okay, because I don't feel that any one thing that I say causes anything per se, but the gesture of speaking in these ways creates some kind of preconditions for whatever else to be created. And I was thinking a little bit about this possibility of coaching people and how perhaps I might be good at it. I've never thought that I would, but this morning I had an insight about myself, how I can be really anally, retentively harsh. And for people that want to hear the truth or something that holds them more accountable, this could be a good skill. And I feel that people who are labeled with bipolar do get in contact with speaking more of the truth. I don't know if it's the actual truth or a subjective truth, but people who are labeled will say things other people don't want to hear. And that's part of what gets us in trouble. But there could be some truth to some of it, but people... So yeah, people don't want to hear the truth or things that are more truthful. We're conditioned to lie to each other and we don't act as eyes for each other, pointing out certain things that might be helpful. It's not that we lie to each other, it's that the very operating system we have within ourselves is a lie. So it can necessarily only create lies. We're lying to ourselves and then we lie to each other. But the very operating system itself is a lie. The operating system of feeling like we have a separate self, like we're separate from, from actuality, that we're not in touch with it. That very operating system is that which creates us not being in touch with it, which is a lie as we are in touch with it. But the operating system is the lie. It's not that it creates lies. It is the lie. And we are that lie when we're operating in that way. It's not that we're lying to ourselves. It's that it's a lie that we have a separate self. And this lie keeps us comfortable. I'm feeling the sense of not having a separate self and that's why I'm speaking as that sensation and it's not comfortable at all it's very uncomfortable since one is more in connection with the truth of connectivity it's difficult to sit by and watch people eat meat and do harmful things to their body and be okay with it I must say that I'm not loving all the moments in front of me I don't love to watch people eat meat, cook fish. It's disgusting, it stinks, it's rude and mean and unnecessary. And so I'm participating in a lie by pretending I'm okay being around that because I'm not. And I'm not okay with people watching TV all day and being on their devices all day mindlessly. So yeah, that sounds judgmental, but I don't like to look at that. It's like watching a bad TV show that I'm not changing the channel from. And I will change the channel, but I'm just admitting it to myself that I'm not okay when people do harmful things to themselves. Because I was seeing the unhealth of some of my family members and how by participating in my family, if they don't change, one day I'm going to be spoon feeding people or sitting by their bedside and they're not taking responsibility for their health. And over the last years, I spend nearly every single penny that I have on my health or something healthy. Very little goes into something unhealthy or uncreative. And I see all this passiveness and mindlessness and bodilessness and I feel it and 
then, you know, this kind of creates a mood in me. But if I were to speak my piece, I'd say, I can't be around this. I can't look at this. This is a crime. This is a crime against the human body. And I'm not saying I'm perfect either, but I work very, very hard at this. And then people who are sensitive, they're called the non-functioning ones in society, yet everyone, if they don't have a so-called mental problem, they're turning themselves into patients of the medical system by not taking responsibility for their health, for their body. And look at all the chaos that's creating. So it's challenging to be feeling this responsibility around others not taking responsibility. And I was thinking, I need to find my neuro tribe. And then I was thinking, I need to create my neuro tribe. And who would be in the group of people I'd actually want to be around? People that don't eat meat, people that don't eat processed food, people, it would be diet based a lot and people that believe they need to eat meat are kidding themselves. And there's a paleo movement and organic meat and all this and I don't know, I just, I don't buy it at the moment. Maybe one day I'll eat that stuff, I can't imagine it at the moment. So I'm speaking as that, I find it revolting and yeah. So I need to get that off my being because I've tried not to be too particularly judgmental, though I have been judgmental towards the mental health system and how it's a factory of creating mental patients and it's nice that I've found other people who are saying the same thing lately. It's one thing to advocate for mental health reform, it's another thing to say this is a process that's creating mental patients. Not make the process better for the mental patients, the process is creating mental patients. Just like the process of eating bad food and rush, rush, rush around is creating a lot of chronic physical illness. Which we think, oh, it costs tax dollars and things, and that's one thing. But it costs other people having to swarm around another when they're in their morbid state of life. in that state of emergency of, oh my gosh, help me because I'm dying or something like that. Because we're not taking responsibility for figuring it out along the way. So that's part of that. And maybe part of my role is to share some of what I've learned about taking care of myself. Because it's one thing if I can take care of myself but if other people can't, I'm going to end up having to take care of other people. And I don't want to take care of other people. I want to create with other people. I want to celebrate with other people. I want to live joyously. Not use the health I've created to go back and change people's diapers. So I went to Marshall's and I got some warm boots. I'm not sure if I love them, but I don't want to go everywhere shopping for boots. And I have 10 days to return them see if I can find something better. I want something warm, that's the basic thing, and waterproof, so I can continue to walk around. And the good thing about having a new iPhone is that it will be water resistant, so that will help with being outside. And I need to find some gloves, and yeah. And I think I'm going to try the ketogenic fat for fuel diet proposed by Dr. Mercola in his book Fat for Fuel. I read the book, or most of it, a while ago and I didn't think that at the time was the best time to try it because Hardy Nutritional said don't try any extreme types of diet. And I'm wondering if this might help a little bit because 
I feel or I think that the diet will give me constant access to fuel and energy. If my body's running on glucose, then I have to regulate my blood sugar through eating, whereas if it's running on fat and ketones, it can take the fat off my body if I'm not eating. And I don't think I'll do that forever, but it might be helpful, I'm not sure. Though I was on a ketogenic type diet before and it didn't prevent hospitalization, so I'm not thinking about it for that. I'm wondering if my heart trembly stuff while I'm falling asleep has something to do with low blood sugar, like maybe I should have a snack. And it might not have anything to do with anything, but it's fun to create hypotheses and do little experiments. I thought of some more F's to go with fight, flight, freeze, vain, or free. Free is creativity, being free of the self. And there's also funny. And also, of course, F off, which is kind of negation. If something's fearful, just facing it and being denying it, really. So that's different than fighting or feigning. It's standing up and just saying, F off. And I was thinking about the standard American diet and applying that to the standard American lifestyle and how that creates so much chaos. And the recovery movement in mental health is about putting people back in the standard American or the Western lifestyle. And there's a different lifestyle altogether, which we need to design and create that scaffolding and move into it in order to find out and discover what it is. And I'm wondering if there is any such thing as mental health or if mental is an abstraction, which is a distraction from the actual. Our lack of in-touchness with the actual creates an abstraction of a pattern to move about the world, but this is actually what creates us not being in touch with the actual. So can we create health in our abstractions that we've made? Our patterns, our habits? I don't know. And I was wondering if part of this weird heartbeat thing that happens to me has nothing to do with mental health per se, but it's another way of the body calling consciousness back to it because Consciousness has created a lot of ideas and possibilities and had visions and seen future creations to move into. But then as that is declining, that consciousness is being called back to the body by giving a little palpitation like, Well, remember you have a body? Oh, here consciousness is re-entering the body because some of it has been diverted into creativity. So I don't know about that, but perhaps there's nothing to fear there at all. Sort of like if I hit my shin on a table, I'm going to be reminded that I have a shin, but I don't need to be afraid of the table. So if the universe gives me a little poke in the heart, I don't think I need to be afraid of the universe, but I'm reminded that I have a heart, I have a body. It's when everything is operating so smoothly that we forget that we have it. So the creativity can be so perfect in a way that one can forget about one's body. And that can happen in so-called mania. We start to neglect our body because we're so into creativity. And the universe might give us a few pokes to remind us that we have a body and to take care of it. 